Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Mortal Empires. Last time, our strategic situation was bad, and this time, our strategic situation is still bad in the form of Grimgore Ironhide is coming for us with a very large army. That is a lot of orc boys. He also has boar boys, who are pretty nasty shock cavalry. He has the Death Creepers, who have regeneration and poison missiles, not fun, and he has a rank 9 Doom Diver. One of the worst artilleries in the game, right up there with Hell Cannons. His card of Black Orcs, thankfully, does not have the Immortals tacked on, and I thank the game for not giving it, him that. He does have eight peak loonies, though, who are unbreakable and quite dangerous, and these big ones aren't exactly helping. So I want to kind of negate his numbers advantage. Lord of the Anglin. Problem is, I'd take Barak Var for that. So that is going to take a little while. Therein lies my problem. All right, I can, I'm going to skip this upgrade notification because I don't actually care that Barak Dewa's back got upgraded. However, I will upgrade Karak Izor for the sake of money. Very important to remember, you should always be investing your money. Money is good. Money. I kind of want to upgrade Grimhold's defenses, but I kind of don't at the same time. For the wisdom of I, Let's see how these guys hear what you have to say. We'll hear it They do rather gold. like me, and I'm pretty high up there in their strength rankings. Not likely. The kind of Umbaraki scum, as you so dark. eloquently put it, that doesn't actually- kid. Holy shit! Karak Hearn wants to join me? I'll take that. Three more settlements, ladies and gentlemen. Three more settlements! Well, that's a pretty good, well-built settlement. I'm going to demolish the trading depot, because I don't want it, but... A Pottery Maker is a very nice benefit. I don't really want the Slayer Shrine. I don't really like using Slayers much. Karak Angushar is still working. I don't really care for that, but having cannons to be recruitable is going to be very helpful indeed. In addition, my upkeep cost has been reduced via the Iron Smelter. This is going to be very profitable indeed. Coin... 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 Oh, am I taking public order penalties from corruption, events, taxes... And taking faction penalties is my grudges! What is the other grudge? I need to occupy Varenka Hills. Ah, uh, ball sacks. So I'm going to have to deal with my negative public order for a little while while I busily kick the shit... While I work on kicking the shit out of Grimgore Ironhide. That's going to get worse with Barag Dewa's bag being demolished, too. How shall I get if I demolish this? 390. I don't think it's worth it. Because I don't think it'll happen in time, so, yeah. Next turn, we're going to move on Barak Bar and take it. I might fight it if, it if I feel like it, but I don't think I will. Siege battles aren't really interesting. Except for the defense, in my opinion. Especially if you've got, like, a fully built-up city, and you have your own, and you've got a stack in it. And you basically have another stack from the garrison. There's two incoming enemy stacks, or even more than two. That's always really, really fun. At least, it's fun to me. Interesting, the Vampire Counts and Tempelhof have a defensive alliance, if I'm reading the map right there. The Wood Owls, however, don't like anybody. The Empire made peace with Durthu, I'm not even surprised. The Empire now owns Montfort and is sieging the Karaks. 
Yeah, save for the you silly, silly sausages. <laughs> Yeah, I think what happened there is that Karak Hearn got their army wiped out by something. Because I didn't get a new army for that. Unless I did and I missed it. Oh, I just realized. Brock Iron Pick isn't the guy who beat up Isabella. That means he doesn't have regeneration. I'm not going to get the Lord with regeneration now. Oh, poo. That sucks. Or is Brock Ironpick the man with, well, not man, with regeneration? If he is, that's very helpful. If he isn't, that's very unhelpful. I'm probably going to put the public order building in Grinstead. What are the mutinous gets doing all the way out here with a 13 strong stack? You gits, what are you doing? <laughs> yes, you gits. By the way, the event for the everyone who owns a major port can also see anyone else with a major port. It comes at the same time chaos does, the first wave of chaos. Not the second wave that not the wave of Archeon that procs the uh, Sealed of Civilization trait, but yeah. We're going to be a while, ladies and gentlemen. I will say this much. If you're playing as Ulth 1, keep the Shrine of Cain fortified if you think Chaos is going to come. Keep it fortified. It's a nice garrison buff from the Shrine of Cain itself. And of course it comes with some other nice gubbins. And now I am out of steam. <laughs> By the way, these are the exact same thing. There's nothing more important than avenging every grudge. Are we not Dowie? The debt must be settled in blood and damn the cost. Foolish dwarf, of course the grass grudge must be settled no matter the cost. Now bring the foe to account and we'll have no more wobbles from you. Don't do it, eh? Belly guy, I Alright. If I take Barak Var, that I shouldn't have Grimgore coming in. I hope this works. If this doesn't work, I am so screwed. No, no! On to vengeance! He's blocking me. He's blocking me by existing. The no! No! Moving no! Out. Bad Belagar! He's blocking Our me by existing. Damn it! This is bad. This is really really oh wow that's really good salt is good for dwarves damn it I'm gonna have to fight him at Doc Karaz then hopefully the garrison will be oh the garrison actually isn't too bad it's six cars and they're all at full strength if I can get Grimgore to come to me then I can win the fight that's going to be really helpful. Plus five public order won't solve my problems. You maxed out public order, but... Hmm. You're probably also going to be under assault soon, so let's get you a watch room. Karak Hearn? That. Karakazor. Let's work on turning Karakazor until so into somewhere I can get the legendary, the greatest, Iron Breakers. I'm not too worried about Izor or. 
any of the Southern Grey Mountains being under attack, though, so I'm not going to upgrade them. Jerome Marston needs some work. I don't think Grimgore can hit Barag Dwa's bag, but I'm not going to invest the population just in case. I'm going to feel very bad about all that moving around, because now Belgar is going to be tired in battle. He does have Obstinate, which will help quite a bit. But it's not good. Hopefully Grimgore is just going to go straight in and try and crack my head open. That is what I'm hoping is going to be the result here. If he hides inside Barak Var, I will not be able to take it. Also, I'm going to look at something. Recruit Lord, Brock Iron Pit. I don't get to have the Lord of the Generation. <sighs> it's going to be a while before I can unlock Bugman's Brewery too. Which is going to be very nice because I'm going to be using quite a few Rangers as, well, ranged combat units. So... At least my Rangers in this army are going to get a slight speed buff from that perk I put on my Master Engineer. I believe it was... 5% faster? Right now it's 8%. That's not too bad, you know? 36 speed. They're going to run into issues, you though. Dare approach me. Yes, I dare approach you. My reputation with these guys is deteriorating because I confederated. My reputation with these guys is deteriorating because I confederated. But it shouldn't be too bad. No but that's not too bad. That's really bad. And that's very bad because Gitsendik already deals a lot of damage and he already deals a lot of armor piercing damage. Basically, at 392, unblockable damage a hit. 392 plus that 40% is not fun to get hit with. That 116 armor is also not fun. Base 110, but... Yeah. <laughs> Grimgore Ironhide is very dangerous. Okay, Dromar's going to have a rebellion next turn. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dearie me. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dearie me. At least it's going to be an undead rebellion. Due to its high level of corruption. So I'm going to be able to just shoot all the undead with crossbows and hopefully call it a day. Especially as I will have a grudge thrower backing me up to soften them up. And Dwarf Warriors with great weapons are generally a better choice against the undead, because you don't need shields against the undead. They have literally zero range units. The only undead group that ever gets range units on the tabletop, at least, is the... Well, the Von Karsteins actually on tabletop can field mortals, like human troops, so technically them. But the only undead troops that can do it come from the Tomb Kings, which is probably because of balancing. You can swing a sword, you should be able to fire a bow, and they did attack me, and I am going to fight this. Because I am on the defense here, so I have a very large advantage. Especially as next turn, Grimgore is going to have his blood-forged armor. Not nice. Also, he cooled it with the blood of runesmiths. That is a lot of dead dwarves for that armor. Granted, I'm pretty sure it was Chaos Dwarf Runesmiths, but still, the point stands. That is a lot of dead dwarves. I'm going to save first, though, just in case I get my ass really kicked. Because I can't afford to lose at this stage in the game. Losing those four special heroes would basically mean I cannot take back eight peaks. 
All right, so it's not one of the special maps that two introduced, but meh. Fight the battle. Let's hope those extra six cards will make it make 2026 fights, well, winnable. I could have auto resolved it, but come on, it's Grimgor Ironhide. You don't auto resolve fights with him. That just isn't fair. <laughs> Unless you know it's his, I'm going to throw Virgilian Rock Lobas at you. Armies that sometimes he did in Total War Warhammer 1. I wonder if those they patched those out in 2. I haven't seen one, but I haven't seen anything, you know, significantly kicking Grimgore's arse up between his ears yet, you know? Hopefully this fight is going to be, indeed, me kicking Grimgore's arse up between his ears. Because losing this fight would basically lose me the campaign. You'd how utterly awful Clan Angrin is with that 50% upkeep to me. Ugh. Ugh, I say. Ugh. Alright then. Now, miners can Vanguard deploy, they're probably, it's, this is probably fluff-wise them tunneling up, but I wouldn't recommend it. King, ready to serve. Let's look at this army set up and... Okay, so the cavalry is on that side. Miners do not, in fact, unlike warriors, have charge defense versus large. Miners! Dwarf warriors! For the ancestor gods! Warriors! Break them back! Alright, what I think I'm going to do is this. There's a hill right here. It's a nice long. A nice long hill. I'll put my artillery up here, protected by the land and giving me a height advantage that I can use to rain down death on our own troops. I'm gonna put two cards of rangers over here and I'm going to hope that they're going to be Actually, no, there's the boar boys. I can't afford to do that. They just get wiped out. Okay, in that case, wait, they, he put the big guns and the black orcs all in one spot. If I can wipe out his black orcs via simple volume of ranger fire, that would be a victory. Because that'd be undeniably a victory for me. His black orcs are easily the most dangerous thing he currently has on the field. Put my hammers over here, I'm gonna put the grumbling guard over here. Beligar, go here. My master engineer should probably stay up here. So we can shoot at them as they come down. I need to hold that place very hard, so I'm going to put that there. And that should keep most of my troops covered via various methods of encourage, taunt, etc. Objective 1. Black orcs. Let's see how they get shot up. Whoop. And we see that health just drop like a stone. Look at that. Whoop. Mm. Only 23 are dead because they come in 80 strong units. This because individual black orcs are kind of ridiculous. Look at that. The black orc unit has effectively been wiped out. Already. Run, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. We're the Rangers, man. All right, shoot those big guns. Mm. 
Run away, run away! Big Guns will wreck Rangers in Malay, even if it's great weapon Rangers. Hopefully this massive arrow fire is going to break their morale. Give me two cards of Rangers, I want you on that unit of Black Orcs. Run away, run away, hope they take enough damage to just break at this point. Come on, you're under a constant. Bring out the axes. Fine, just fight them, damn it. All right, let's see if I can get the, watch these guys fire. Was that one of their shots? Damn, I didn't see. All right. This is why it is called the Goblobber. Yes, that is in fact a goblin tied to a rock being thrown at something. You can even see the little bands holding him to the rock. Welcome to Warhammer! <laughs> now you guys, I want hitting those Error Boys. The Error Boys are actually kind of a problem. Good. Alright, swapped out of a melee mode. Start shooting those big guns. Chase down those black orcs. Let's see if Grimgore will accept getting his troops shot in the back in return for getting more troops onto the field. Yes, he will in fact accept getting his troops shot in the back. These guys are rallying. They're immediately being broken again via the application of a lot of twang twang. These guys have lost a few troops, but I'm softening up this flank, and more importantly, they're big guns, which makes them very, very dangerous indeed. Also, for some reason, big guns have bonus versus large, but that isn't recorded anywhere. Like on their sheet. Main sheet, that is. I think I'm gonna put these rangers on that. And then have these guys chase that. And these guys have totally shattered that unit, so I'm gonna move them up. My actual quarrelers are going to be used to shoot up those death creepers, but I'm also going to order them into guard mode. Death creepers are a problem. I'm gonna hope Hulk and Hulk can compensate for Grimgore's ridiculous range dam anti anti-armor damage via the application of Ethereal. I want you to shoot up these guys because they have poison on them. No, no, no. I want you to get Grimgore. I want you to get Grimgore. You! Plow in! You! Compress that! You! Compress that! Alright, shoot those guys. Ready to strike. And also entrench my hammers so they're more physically resistant. Ah! Wrath and Ruin the Boar Boys, and I want Oath and Steel and the Rune of Negation. Watch my troops not die. Like, ever. My own quarrelers! Kill those black orcs! Keeping the black orcs from reaching my lines is very important. There's only 25 left. They're very badly damaged. 
but they can still hurt like hell. Do not doubt me on this. Wow, in. It looks like the shock cavalry is rather rapidly learning why you don't crack with the doors. Aha! My, looks like my rangers have gotten over. They are doing their duty. The Karas Encore expects every every dwarf to do their duty. I probably mangled that quote, but whatever. Alright, the miners are going to be compressed badly. I want you to shoot those orc boys. What? They have a thing over here. Ah, pop that. And direct damage on... I guess the less damage... I, that unit of night goblins... Yeah, let's gut them. Hammers on those night goblins. You roll over to that flank. Aha, their artillery has been broken. Move this unit of rangers up and start shooting them in the ass. All right, you guys, get those death creepers. Move now! I plow into the flank of those guys, and that should work. Is Grimgor himself running? Where is Grimgor? Holy shit! He got my—he got my hero. Grimgore got my hero, that's why he's not on the list. Holy shit! Let the vengeance begin! Hey, drop that! Blow through! You can tell them to get back in their throwers, and I'm going to hope they're going to obey. Yes, knight! Warriors! True king! Something mass shatter! I have lost one of my heroes this day to Grimgor Ironhide, even though he had 75% physical resist and was level 15. Take this as an instruction on how ridiculously incredible. Incredibly lethal Grimgor is. Goblins. There is literally four of this stupid unbreakable unit the left. They've been wiped out to the Groby, I guess. A Peric victory, because I lost a hero. These heroes are literally irreplaceable. And none of them were level fifth level 20, so I couldn't even have gotten them immortality. Still, you can see why I was worried about fighting that. The miners kind of crumpled, but they held long enough that the rest of my line started mopping up and I could get the rangers in and killing. The rangers that you saw had very good fun. The black orcs should be wiped out. It should be one of their units of big uns. Grimgor himself actually didn't get hurt very much, because it's fracking Grimgor Ironhide. <sighs> that accursed Urk.
yeah. I wiped out his Doom Divers too. And his one unit of Arrow Boys. Right now he has remaining his big guns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Boar Boys. His Boar Boys and those Death Creepers. And he himself, of course. Yep, I have permanently lost one of the very rare and very potent troops that I could carry. I am nothing for the undead. Leave now. Uh, you're, you're really going to do this? You're really going to do this? They're really going to do this. Okay then. Okay then. Fine. By my hammer, I should slay you where you stand. I am not going to call my allies to help because I don't think Weissenland would come and I don't want to piss off Weissenland. Ugh. This is going to be a problem. Hopefully Kara Dromar's garrison, due to its actually having the garrison building, will be enough. Dead walls and the Bugman's thing, I think I can hold it against any undead stack the AI would throw at me. The AI would love to drop tons of zombies on you and not realize... Tons of zombies isn't actually a very good combat tactic. It can be okay, but you need to have troops to back it up. The AI generally does not back up their zombies well enough. Hello, mutinous gits. You're being strange as usual. I see the Empire wiped out character Ziflin. Well done. Well done. And the Greenskins confederated the Teeth Snatches after they got their asses royally kicked. How did Grimgor pull that one off? My boys just got their arses kicked by these Ungi. Sorry, not Ungi. Ungi. No, Stunties. That's what they're called by orcs. Damn it. I was going to do all sorts of dumb orc voices, and then, of course, it had to... Ha! That's nice! Plus 20 armor piercing damage for the Lord. That's very nice for beating Grimgore. That is a good trait. And I got the Shield of Defiance done! Oh. I need to uh, wound or kill a greenskin character. True King of Eight Peaks! What are your odds? 45%? Avenging Carnage! 40%. 40%. The answer is kind of obvious. <sighs> Alright. I need him as a battle troop more than I need him as a, you know, other troop, so. Grudge bearer. 
The rune smith can go shove in, can go try and shove their shit in again. It's only 20%, yeah, but... The enemy in dark At least I seem to be getting followers out of this. That's helpful. Let's get him scouting, too. How did those Not stack? No, it just means they last longer. So I could take a shot at this to my master engineer, too. Lord of that didn't work out well. Okay. Well, whatever. Get Sapper, please. Uh... To battle. And Beligar himself. Lord of Cranks? Maybe? I do intend to use cannons. Let's do it. Also, global in a unit of long beards. Very well. I will do as you ask. I shall take three turns to get to replenish these warriors. Let's global in two units of long beards. For maximum long beardiness. And to make my troops a little bit that little bit better for holding the line. Yeah, the fact that I managed to get a settlement upgrade is gonna help. Especially, also going to help is the fact that I shoved Grimdor's shit in. That was not a fight that I was expecting to win quite so heavily, I guess would be the best way to put it. I was expecting to win it, but, yeah. Yeah, nah, sauce, but no. Unfortunately, there are no characters left that I can assassinate. He has nothing in his army, so I'm basically going to have to just focus down on this one goblin big boss and continuously try and murder them horribly. This is certainly going to be interesting. And by interesting, I mean a titanic pain in the ass. That wasn't a too difficult battle, though, mostly because they didn't try and push back the rangers that I was using to skirmish. They just charged forward, and in payment, I shot them to death. I have 6,000 gold a turn. I think I can afford having a lord. More importantly, I think I can afford to start building another army. Bridges will be settled. This is going to take a while. But once I have two stacks, I'll be confident in my ability to take eight peaks no matter what they've done with it. It's very hard to argue with two stacks of solid dwarven combat troops. Alright. Still, though, I have kicked the greenskins in the dick. So hard. Run, run. Welcome, King. They'll give me Have military the access. To war. And what can the Dowie do for you? Okay, yes. then. Dowie from you another hole, too. I shoved their shit in. Come on. Ugh. Come on, game. I beat the hell out of him. Uh, now I'm gonna have to take Barakvar with Grimgore's troops in it. Zulrika. In two turns. Because by then all of my troops will have fully replenished. Unfortunately, so will have his, but... Actually, no, his won't have fully replenished. Mine will have. Well, we also recruit goblin wolf riders here, though. Wolf rider archers. That's not going to be too dangerous. He is on the defense behind walls. So in two turns, I will be able to take back Var. Unless, of course, Grimgore sallies out again. If Grimgore sallies out again, I will likely kick his ass up between his ears. Still sad I managed to lose one of my rare... Rare and powerful heroes to, you know, Grimgore. That's what he does. You just point him at a hero or lord, he kills them. It's not really a challenge most of the time. He just kills them. 
No fuss, no muss, they die. Ridiculous damage output, he doesn't get knocked back. He's a really strong lord. <sighs> the main way you honestly want to deal with him is tar pit him with something like those miners that I had. To slow him down, well, you kill the rest of his army around him, and then he runs away. Despite the fact that Grimgore's modus operandi, for example, in Storm of Chaos, which this is kind of mimicking, as the Chaos Invasion is meant to mimic the Storm of Chaos, was, well, the Storm of Chaos ended by... Actually, the Storm of Chaos is kind of interesting, because there are two ways it ended. One is what happened that Games Workshop wrote down, and one is what happened in the tournaments on the tabletop that were meant to represent the Storm of Chaos. When it was wrote down, Chaos was winning, and they had managed to take a good chunk of Kislev, burn a large chunk of it. The Empire was on the back foot, so it wasn't doing too hot. And then Grimgore came in personally and basically just waded into the Chaos forces, killed everything on his way to Archaon, had butted Archaon in the crotch so hard he died, and proceeded to wander off looking for the leader of the Chaos forces and not some random wimpy git. That is what happened in the fluff. On the tabletop, it was a much different story. On the tabletop, Chaos got their shit pushed in. Holy shit, they're actually expanding. No wonder they have a wah. Holy shit, this is bad, okay. Still need Barak Var, though, for the major port event. Watch that pop up next turn, and me getting Incredibly angry that I missed the chance to be able to trade with the High Elves and all those other lovely factions with ports that I can make money from. Anyway. On the tabletop, Chaos was getting their shit pushed in so hard by the Imperial forces. So Games Workshop decided, you know what, we're just going to teleport them to their campaign objective in Kislev. And it turned out that... What happened was Chaos still got their ship pushed in, but not quite as hard, and the Orcs became a fairly major faction in that. Chaos overall lost very heavily in both cases on the tabletop. It is still remembered to this day as something very, very annoying. Yeah, I lost another Karak. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm so pissy. What odd is? Twenty-six percent chance. Nine. Finally, Go. it was successful. Assassinate, so it's a permanent kill. Fuck the hell, yes. All right. <clears throat> Belagar's champion returns with the trove of information. An orc war boss had taken Dawi he had found in prison deep under Black Crag and all but forgotten by their jailer, Gorfang Rotgut. The war boss stole away the dwarves, and under enslavement, forced him to dig new passages within the underway, secrets all but his own rabble of filthy orcs. Belagar's outraged. He at once recognizes the captive Dawi as kin, fine folk taken from Karakazul in the raid years past. This is a fell deed that demands vengeance! However, Iron Hammer knows it's not a grudge he can write on its own. King Casador of Karakazul still broods on this outrage, and so much to be informed at once. Dawi tradition states that, such, that news of such great import be given with a surety, a bond between kings, so that no Dawi can doubt its severity. Belagar doesn't hesitate and sends his shield as his oath. How is the Hammer of Anger in quest? I need to win three more battles. Okay, that's fair enough. Yes, King Lun, you're the Iron Hammer. Oh wait, that was Belagar saying that. Never mind. Point is! Get these moving! 
fill this back up in it's case something screwy happens. You're still recruiting troops. Thankfully, his cavalry are not going to be nearly as much of an issue. So he will have effectively a full stack, though, due to, you know, green skin encampment and all that. That's going to be a problem, but... His big troops, his black orcs, the ones that he started with, and you do start with black orcs, his Grimbor Ironhide, have been, for all intents and purposes, kicked the shit out of. They have been totally exterminated. And that is something incredibly valuable. Black orcs are horrifying to face as the dwarves. They have lots of armor piercing damage and lots of armor. Normally the counter to them is Thunderers, but as you saw, five cards of archers wipes out pretty much anything in very short order. And Grimdor, pretty much everything hold. makes you angry, is the fluff statement that if you go two days without killing anything, you're going to start killing your own troops. This is not an exaggeration of his behavior, that is literally what he does, by the way. It's kind of horrifying. And kind of impressive. Mostly horrifying. Okay, where is the sh Desolation of Nagash? All the way over there. I'm not going to be getting there for a while. Damn it. I need to move a character there. and I don't have any characters to spare. I need to keep this place Ready. fully staffed and garrisoned. It is time. That being said, as dickish as this feels to even think, at least I don't have the redundant hero now. I feel like kind of an ass for even thinking that, but, uh... Don't care, don't care, don't care. Keep it on Belagar, keep it on Belagar. I guess I can get him the Feather Foe Torque. Take this Torque as a reward for, for getting me a quest completed. That's actually pretty useful. Well, quest close to completion, I suppose. I think what will happen is I'll kick the shit out of Narla for an easy thing on the Hammer of Angren quest. And then I'll move in on Barak Var. Assuming I can do so in one turn. If I can't, I'll just move in on Barak Var. Next turn, yes. Belagar Iron Hammer will have more troops. Two cards of Longbeards to replace a, a fallen thane and a card of Dwarf Warriors. Very helpful indeed. Very helpful indeed. Mm, more expensive, but more helpful. Also, I'm using Vact! Longbeards cost less than the Regiment of Renown Dwarf Warriors. Well, I'm using to me at least. By the way, Ulthar's Rangers are actually not too good. You can get them to harass and start shooting people to the ass, they're amazing, and Rangers with great weapons generally do melt units they're pointed at. But for this situation, they're not too good. I am tempted to replace Unit of Warriors with the Peak Gate Guard, though, and the grunts of the Peak Gate Guard not only deal magical attack damage, but also have armor sundering, like, you know, Death Runners. Anyway, I can't get this the guy back in my mustard. Dr. Oz. Let's end the turn and see if this little undead rebellion is going to move in on Karag Jomar. If they are, I'm likely going to fight it on the grounds that the AI is likely to think that a front line of warriors and miners is going to crumple quickly. And forget about the fact that I'll have shot the shit out of them. Hello, Nudthorps. What a stupid name you have. By the way, warrior priest makes... All units nearby them have a 50% miscast chance, so if you get a warrior priest nearby your enemy's mages, that's really useful. However, it's very hard to pull that off, as the AI knows this and they run away. Ah, you're going to attack Grinstat. We don't have the time left in the episode for the battle. You know what? Grinstat is one settlement. I don't really need it too much. 
Wow! Decisive defeat, and I still wiped out two cards of his troops. I did lose Potter as a resource. That is going to make a hole in my trading, but eh. just meh. You know? Meh. <sighs> Alright. Hopefully next turn we're going to be able to take that place and not have to worry too much. Because they did because Grimgore's army has no archers. Aha! Baranduin Stoneheart! Thank you for suppressing that rebellion! Thank you, Zuffbar! Thank you very, very much! Once I take eight peaks, and once I've cleansed the Badlands hard enough that the, that the orcs aren't really a threat to me anymore, or I've, you know, built up my fortification buildings enough that they're not a threat to me anymore, the Border Princes have declared war on the Greenskins. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! This is good. This is good. Oh, this is good. Oh, yes! The Greenskins are going to have some problems. I'm about to demolish their main lord again. And he won't be able to get to run away this time because he's in a settlement battle. And therefore, if the, if the person in the settlement loses, their entire army is considered wiped out no matter the other circumstances. That I don't care too much about, but I have Dwarven Resolve! Plus five leadership for infantry units. Brock Iron Pick has Builder. <sighs> that grudge, okay. Wounds Let's put Barakvar under siege, ladies and gentlemen. Ancestors hear us! He does have archers from the garrison, but all he recruited was two cards of goblin wolf riders, so not really concerned. Let's put them under siege. Next objective is going to be trying to make Fire. friends with the border princes to the point of a- We are willing to hear it. I will. I might not wipe these guys out if they're going to continue to be this friendly. Holy shit. The Empire. Raise Sigma. Where the damage grown! If, if they're willing to come in, if they come in, and they fight at my side here, I swear by my own beard that I stroke right now that I am not going to wipe out the border princes. Holy shit. This could change so much. 
If I manage to take this without min without much losses, holy shit. Holy shit. This could be absolutely amazing. God, Jomar will have another rebellion soon, before it can grow. Damn. Normally I'd end the episode here, but I want to in turn and see what the Border Princes do. If they move in, I'm going to play the battle next episode. If they don't move in, I'll play the battle next episode anyway, unless the Let's odds are go. vastly stacked against Barakvar again. Please note, while they're under siege, they cannot replenish. Dragon. Please also note, my forces are fully healed up. So... Border the Princes! Man lanes! Fight at my side against this Urk, and I will guarantee your sovereignty for the rest of time. Do not fight against this Urk. And you may find your name in the Damas Kron. I will not fulfill it today. I will not be even fulfilling that grudge anytime soon. But I will fulfill it if you do not move in on those accursed irks. I could save many, many Dawi lies by fighting at my side. And Gorst has his unique. That's rare. The Liber Noctis. He usually doesn't manage to get this. You know what? I think I can win this. I have long beards. I have a lot of quarrelers. I have a Thane. And his troops are not all that good. I'm going to save here. We're going to play this battle next episode, it seems. So, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, or on the threads and space battles and sufficient velocity that will be linked in the description. And for now, goodbye. We're going to have a lot of corpses to kill, and hopefully a lot of arcs if the man lanes are cooperative. <laughs>